In today's video, we are going to go through a new feature just released by Vapi that makes querying and retrieving information from your knowledge bases far more effective. Unlike traditional knowledge bases for our voice agents, this querying tool allows us to add a diverse range of different data sets that our tool can query into to retrieve more context specific information. And when it comes to voice agents, this tool makes it far more effective and precise when it comes to answering very domain specific questions. Let's dive in. So when it comes to the query tool against traditional knowledge basing, it's important to make the comparison here. Our query tool is essentially a function call where we're preloading a certain file ID and uploading that to Gemini to retrieve a specific piece of content. Compared with your traditional knowledge base, Bases, we upload that which is then chunked and vectorized and used as additional context within your agent as a whole. And as a result, using this query tool, we're able to have much more enhanced contextual awareness, again, answering more accurately and more precisely those domain specific questions. We have response accuracy, which is what I touched on, where instead of having this big knowledge base as general context and knowledge for your agent, we have improved response accuracy and obviously this idea of customizable knowledge retrieval where we can configure multiple knowledge base files that may be unrelated in the specific data that it houses. And today we'll get into creating your own tool and how it all works and then we'll jump into what it sounds like and how accurate it is. So to create this query tool, we'll head over to the tools side of the dashboard here and we'll go ahead and create a new tool. And this will prompt you with a drop down menu of a variety of different tools that we can choose from. Specifically today, we're gonna to be focusing on this query tool where the magnifying glass is. We'll go ahead and select that. As with any tool, we can give it a name. We'll leave it as query underscore tool for now. And what you want to do is create a description of this tool, what this tool does, why it's used and when to use it. And for this, we can just say this tool is used to retrieve information about including item pricing and information and general or frequently asked questions. This is a basic description of how this tool operates and what it actually is. We have a few options here, including asynchronous tool execution and strict parameter validation. We'll leave those for now as we're not sending parameters with this tool. And in saying that, we'll go ahead and scroll down to really the crux of this query tool. And here is the section where we can start to add our knowledge bases to this tool in which it'll query into. And this knowledge base could be anything from a text document, a Word document, and so forth. The actual contents of that could be anything from price lists, numbers, general FAQs, and everything in between. For today's purposes, I'm going to pull up a price list of a company, Light and Easy, which contains details about certain types of meal plans, including pricing, the labels of each meal plan, and this is about four pages. Your knowledge base would look different, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna use something slightly complex like this, which contains a lot of labels and pricing as our data set to query into. And to add a knowledge base, we'll go ahead and click add knowledge base. We can give this a name. We'll call this pricing underscore list. And the description here is really quite important. This is where we get to describe exactly when this knowledge base should be used. And for something like a pricing list, we can assume that this knowledge base in particular should only be used when a user had asked a specific question about a certain item's pricing or a description of that item, what it contains and everything like that. Think of it as adding a prompt or an additional context along with sending a file to an LLM. So for instance, this pricing list, it's quite evident that this knowledge base should be used when a user is requesting pricing information. Use this knowledge base when a user requests information pertaining to an item's pricing or an item's 
specific details. Something like that. Now what we can do is go ahead and add this file ID and then we'll add this tool within a VAP agent to facilitate getting pricing information. And to do that, we can head over to the side here under files and we can choose that file I had just shown you and upload that retrieving the file ID. Once that's uploaded, you'll see our name of the file we had just uploaded. And on the top right hand corner, this is the ID we are looking for to input into our tool. We can go ahead and copy this, heading back over to our query tool we had just created and pasting in our file ID like so. And that's really it. It's very, very simple to use this query tool and considering the effectiveness and accuracy of this tool, which you'll see in a moment, it's a no brainer to incorporate a tool like this where your agent needs to return precise information to the user upon request. Now what we can do is go ahead and save this tool and we'll head back over to our assistants. Now here I have just a general customer support assistant where we're acting as Alex from Light and Easy. Its purpose is a customer service voice agent for Light and Easy where the primary purpose is to help customer answer questions about our products. As far as the personality, speech characteristics and conversation flow goes, this will be largely up to you. But what you'll want to embed in your agent is a section in which that tool we had just created should be invoked in conversation. And we can go ahead and add a section, maybe called information retrieval, we can say something like the following. If the user asks a pricing related question, return pricing by using the query tool, which mind you is the name of that tool we had just created about that particular product. Always use this tool for each query, never assume pricing waiting for the query tool response. So as long as within your agent prompt, you're explicitly saying when to use and invoke that particular tool, you'll be good to go. All we have to do is publish this and we'll head over to the functions tab and we'll assign our tool we had just created, the query tool. Click that and we'll publish. Now, if I bring up the pricing list that we added to our query tool, Let's go ahead and query our agent on the seven day breakfast, lunch and dinner pricing, as well as any other pricing. And let's confirm the accuracy of our tool call. Let's go ahead and talk with assistant and I'll pull up this just for reference. What is this seven day breakfast, lunch and dinner standard plan cost? The seven days breakfast, lunch and dinner standard plan costs $193 and 95 cents. How much is the breakfast and lunch only? The five day breakfast and lunch only plan is $86 and 95 cents. So as you saw, that was all right, but it's really not doing justice on making a proper comparison between your general adding a knowledge base and your querying tool into a knowledge base. What I'm gonna do now is upload a file that's really unstructured and quite large which specifically we're gonna upload a list of postcodes, addresses, and store locations for this particular company, creating a query tool where we can retrieve the closest store location based on my postcode. What I'll do also is upload that same file as a normal knowledge base and we'll compare the difference. So here for context, we have a large, large file of unstructured store location data. Specifically, what we have here is the store address, the state, which is in Australia, and the postcode. And what we wanna do as a user is find out what the closest store is to us based on our postcode. And we can prompt the agent to collect that. And we're gonna upload this file and make a comparison between your normal knowledge basing and the query tool, which has access to this file also. Now, to do that, let's first go into our files and we'll choose a file and upload the one I just showed you. And once it's uploaded, we can copy this file ID again, heading back over to our tools. And the beauty about this query tool is we can add multiple files within the same tool. Firstly, we added our knowledge base pricing list where we're returning details pertaining to items pricing. Next, what we want to do is add a new knowledge base, calling this stores, for example, and we'll add a description again. Use this when a 
user asks about the closest store location to them. What we can do here is paste in our file ID and we'll go ahead and save this. Heading back over to our assistant and we'll also want to add another specific prompt that will let our agent know when to invoke this tool. And specifically, we'll want to also reference the name of our knowledge base two here. So back in our assistant, we can add something like the following. If the user asks a location related question, return the closest store by its address and using the stores query tool function, only return the address. Now all we have to do is publish our agent and because our tool's already connected here, we don't have to change anything else. What I'll do now is call up and give it my postcode and we'll see if it does return the correct store address as per that specific postcode. And I'll pull up the TXT document here and we'll pick a random one out of here. I know this is a lot to look at. Maybe we'll zoom in a bit. Hi there, this is Alex from Light and Easy Customer Support. How can I help you today? Hey, my postcode is 5204. What's the nearest store to me? The nearest store to postcode 5204 is located at 85 Main Street, Normanville, SA 520. Cool. My my cousin is located at postcode 5158. What's the nearest store to him? The nearest store to postcode 5158 is located at uh, CNR Lonsdale, Fly Ramrod Ave. Hallett Cove, SA 5158. Cool. And another family member, their postcode's 2360. What's the nearest store to them? The nearest store to postcode 2360 is located at 99119 Byron St. Inverell NSW236. Cool. So as you can see from such a large list like that and very arbitrary and unstructured, obviously a knowledge base would be far better than that. You can see it was very accurate in returning the addresses. Now, of course, this could be prompted better to say those addresses a bit more better uh, as well as asking some pre questions and so forth, but you get the idea. Now to really hit this query tool home, I'm going to go ahead and add that file as a knowledge base for this agent and remove that tool and then ask it again a series of questions about my postcode to return the relevant address. So I'll add the stores, publish, and we'll remove this information about product identity. I actually put this in the wrong spot as well and it still worked good. Anyway, we'll remove the mention of our query tool from both sections here. We'll use instead the name of the knowledge base. So if the user asks a location related question, return the closest store by its address and using the stores.txt knowledge base, we'll go ahead and publish this. Now we'll remove this tool, publish, and we'll speak with our agent. I'll pull up the TXT and we'll compare the difference. Hi there, this is Alex from Light and Easy Customer Support. How can I help you today? Hey, my postcode is two, sorry, 6324. What's the closest store to that? So you're looking for a store near postcode 6324. The closest store to that postcode is, is there anything else I can help you with? What was the store? Sorry about that. The closest store to postcode 6324 is located at 28 Marine Terrace. And I'm at postcode 3505. What's the closest store to that? Postcode 3505. That puts you closest to uh, the IGA Richie's Mildura store located at 103 1123 Deacon Avenue, Mildura. Is there anything else I can help you with today? And I'm at Postcode 3047, what about that? Postcode 3047, that puts you closest to the IGA Richie's Broadmeadow store located at 7A Griffith Street. So as you can see there, it was off. We didn't get that very specific and precise information, although 
One of the addresses there was the next address, uh, the next number of the postcode, but it wasn't that specific address. Now in real life, your store addresses may look like a TXT document that's unstructured or it may not, but I wanted to show you that and make the comparison between a normal knowledge base and this query tool. And as we saw today, the query tool is far more accurate when it comes to retrieving very precise information. Particularly, we saw it excel with that stores document asking very specific numbers that require very specific addresses in a largely arbitrary and unstructured data set. And this just goes to show how knowledge bases are useful in some contexts but using tools specifically like the one we had just built today in other specific scenarios is far more optimal when it comes to creating reliable and accurate AI voice agents. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment below. Again, if you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, do hit that subscribe button. I upload weekly, but that is it for today. Until next week.